love. Say hey, y'all. Say hey, y'all. Say my hair finally growing back. Yeah, you right. Oh, girl, get away from me. Ah, we black. We don't do that. I told you. I told you I don't do that. Sit down. Can you sit down while mama do the teaching, please? Yeah? You gonna let mama do the teaching? You done ate? You done pooped? You done did everything you need to do. Now get out of my face. Okay. All right, all right, all right. You gonna learn today. Hey, y'all. What's up? It's your girl Sunray coming at you guys with another teaching with Sunray. Okay, so today's title is In the Deep. <laughs> Ooh, the joy of the Lord. It is my strength. Yes, the praise lifts heavy. The praise it lifted, the heaviness of the trials inflicted on me. <laughs> Y'all didn't come here for that. But, oh my gosh, God is good. Okay, so today is going to be hopefully a relatively quick teaching. It's kind of a continuation of the power of multiplicity, except the Holy Spirit said, call this one in the deep. So y'all know I'm all about giving revelatory insight, giving something that you can understand or giving you something, you know, malleable that you can actually understand, something tangible, something tactile, you can touch it, right? And breaking it down in a way where you can actually understand it, okay? And we're going to do this relatively quickly today because I watched my video. I said, God, Holy Spirit, you just be moving, okay? And so as I was watching it, remember, out of one act was multiplied by four consistently. The one act of Peter going to go get the fish, it had four times as much, right? But then also Peter... Being obedient, both times Peter was obedient to what it was that the Lord needed him to do. Out of one act came multiplicity. And so if you have not seen that teaching, please make sure you see that because this is only building on that. You know, we, we scaffold. I love the scaffolding technique where I kind of pull y'all back to see what y'all know. And then we build on that, okay? Because I'll, I want y'all to get out of diapers. I want you to be mature believers. I want you to eat the meat, okay? I want you to be at the big boy table, but until then, I'm going to take what's at the big boy table, break it down into milk, something that's digestible, okay, for all of us to understand, because there's complexity in simplicity, which is crazy. That's an onomatopoeia. Hey, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ooh, girl, that was kind of deep. Okay, anywho, so um, something else hit me, though, the parable of the sower, because remember... When the and in some texts of the Bible, some variations, it says the sower went out to sow. <laughs> so the role of a farmer is to sow seed. And when I looked in the Hebrew or in the Greek, actually, of the definition, it was talking about someone who scatters, someone who scatters. So the sower went out to sow. He threw them out. And we know there were four different types of soil. So I'm not going to go down into the soil because guess what? I've already done a teaching, multiple teachings on the soil. So I'm actually going to tag those in the description box below. Please make sure you're watching all these teachings. They're going to prove very substantial for you. And right now, I just want to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. He been here, but he just showed up. Hey, Holy Spirit, move and have your way. But okay, so the um, sower, he sowed the seed and it landed on four different types of soil. But when it landed on the fertile soil, the fertile soil was the one that produced this great yield. A hundred times, 60 times, 30 times, right? Wow, it's amazing. And I remember, so before I get into that, I'm going to get into that and then I'm going to get into the two lessons to pick up from it. And so then it had me think back again to what the teaching we just went through. Jesus told Peter after he had been throwing his net out all day, specifically in the deep is where your increase was. So in the deep waters was where that increase came from, but also in deep soil, deep good soil, that was where 
the farmer's harvest yielded 160, 30 times. So there's something about in the deep. And we know in the deep things is the knowledge of God. In the deep things is where we find out who we are. In the deep things is our destiny. In the deep things is how you locate that, that kingdom marriage, that kingdom assignment, okay? In the deep things, okay? But we ain't gonna go there. We're focused on how in the deep is where multiplicity comes from. Because what do we think about it? The deeper the soil is, the deeper the roots grow, the more stable the tree is and the more strong it is and mighty that it flourishes, okay? And so um, I began to pick up on two major lessons. Because remember, we're not trying to make this long. The first lesson is this. And God actually showed me this in ministry before I even started. Don't deviate from the assignment that God has given you. When he tells you to sow, don't become apathetic to the assignment because you don't see an immediate return. Don't become apathetic. Apathetic means loss of interest, loss of empathy, loss of sympathy, loss of you don't care no more. Right. And Galatians 6, 8 through 9 tells us we love to say, do not grow weary and well doing for in due season you shall reap a harvest. But the scripture directly before that, it tells us if you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh, which is corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap of the spirit. So sometimes I was like, oh, God, I probably took that out of context because we apply it to things that we're doing. Right. Just in general, like, well, I've been doing this on the outside. I've been doing this on the outside. So I should see something in return. No, no, no. What Paul was doing, he was giving people encouragement that are sowing into the things of the spirit to know that even if now you don't see the actual harvest, know that you're going to reap everlasting life. You're going to reap th the things of the spirit matter way more than the physical. OK, so I just want to say that. Continue to do your assignment. Don't become apathetic because you're not seeing an immediate return. Don't search for instant gratification when it comes to YouTube, when it comes to ministry. When it comes to God uh, calling you into ministry, you might as well get used to instant gratification being a thing of the past. Okay? And I, I say this because when God was calling me into ministry, he had me study the parable of the sower. And specifically, he had me focus on, um, I think it was in Mark. It's one of those where it's like four and eight. And I, it's always four with me, four and eight. And eight is my favorite number ever since I was a kid. Because eight is divisible by two, which equals four. And then four is divisible by two, which equals two. And then two is divisible by two, which equals one. Like, what? how is that not beautiful? You don't like it? I do. But anywho, <laughs> what? People always be like, girl, what are you talking about? But whatever. Okay, 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 okay. We're not trying to make this teaching long. And so... Pretty much though, what God was saying to me at the time was as he was like, I just need you to sow. I just need you to throw the teachings out there. I just need you to throw the prophetic words out there. I just need you to do this because what you sow, my daughter, is going to land on fertile soil that's going to reap you a large harvest. It may not be right now. It might just be up in heaven in my mansion, you know, whatever it is. But I want to encourage someone with the first lesson. Do not be worried about instant results when it comes to sowing in the deep. Now, this is where it gets into the prophecy slash second lesson. This here is what the Holy Spirit really wants to focus on. And as soon as I said that, I just felt the Holy Spirit just intensify real heavy. So that right there was that, you know, going into ministry, doing that, where you're just sowing. Because think about it. Before Jesus showed up, Peter was just throwing his net out, catching whatever, catching whatever. But then there comes a time. But then there comes a season when the Lord he still will have you doing your assignment. You will still be sowing. But he begins to get strategic with what he has you sow into. Because guess what? You can now be trusted with a great and mighty harvest. So what the Lord will do is, is he will let you know, over there, that's deep. Sow into that. You're going to be like, on the outside, you may not see no growth. You may be like, God, why am I sowing like $50 into this? I don't see no, you know. And this is, somebody can, you know, verify this, but I've learned this through the spirit of the Lord, that what may look dormant to you is actually in process. And when that person wakes up and when their soil begins to yield an increase, every seed that was attached to that person, every seed that was sown, everything just begins to grow instantly and rapidly. So when you sow into fertile ground, what they're saying is, is that when they break forth, your seed shall break forth too. Everything happens at once. 
Literally, God showed me this and it just made so much sense. When you're, let me say it this way. Let's say some of y'all sold into this ministry, right? Okay, boom. Y'all may not see an immediate return or anything like that. It may be like, what's going on with this? Whatever, whatever. God, you told me to do this. I don't understand. Out of obedience. But then let's say someone's like, well, that ministry don't look, that don't, that don't look like it's growing. That don't look this. But you, by obedience, you sold right? And it can be time. It can be encouragement. It does not prayer intercession. It does not always have to be financial, but there are the financial seeds, right? Cool. All of a sudden you start noticing this ministry take off like, whoosh. but then you start noticing things in your life begin to take off and you're like, whoa, I think I'm getting too deep here. I'm gonna be like, prophet Lovey, like, should I, y'all know, I'm gonna delete this. I'm just, <laughs> y'all ain't ready. Okay. But anywho, so the Lord is saying that this is a prophetic word that you have entered a season of strategic sowing. The Lord is going to direct you where to sow your resources, where to sow your time. One day you'll wake up and he'll suddenly give you a vision of a reel to post on Instagram. He'll suddenly give you a business plan to just go forward with. He'll suddenly give you a book idea that you'll just be able to write whatever it is. And God's going to tell you exactly where to put it at the right time. It's not so, you know how sometimes I was like, look, God, I feel like I'm trying to help you be God. But then God had to reveal to me that there are sometimes out of obedience, God's like, no, I'm going to use your act of obedience, listening to me. That the sowing that you did in this action, I'm actually using that to activate everything that's connected to the blessings that I have for you, whatever the case may be. So what the Lord is saying today is that for some of you, in the deep. In the deep is where your increase is going to come. In the deep is where you shall experience being able to rest in the sheepfold and not have any worry. In the deep is where your increase is coming from in this season because the Lord, he is instructing you because you have been faithful. Peter was faithful to continue throwing his net out there. Even to the extent when he was like, but Jesus, okay, whatever you say in the deep. So for some of you, you're like, God, but I've been in ministry for so long. But God, I've been teaching for so long. But God, I've been doing this for so long. But God's like, yes, but do it over here. The same thing you've been doing, but do it over here. And then all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, wait, huh? That's astronomical. And that's the Lord blessing you. That is the Lord blessing you. And I just pray over every single individual whom this word is for. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. First of all, God, I just thank you, God. You are glorious. God, I just thank you, Lord. You are the lifter of our heads. I thank you, God, for giving us, uh, what do you call it, joy in exchange for the sorrow, God. Thank you for the spirit of joy. God, we cleanse ourselves before you, Lord God, and that's just ask for forgiveness. Cleanse us, Father. Make us more like you. And God, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak unto you, Lord. And I just decree and declare, God, that the people that this word is for, that you are giving them eyes to see and ears to hear and hands and feet that move in action and according to what it is that you are showing and telling them. God, out of that one act of obedience, I decree and declare that there shall be such a radical amount of increase, whether it's financial, whether it's in health, whether it's in their uh, lineage, things being broken off, freedom, deliverance, God, whatsoever it is, God, that one act of obedience I decree and declare today by the spirit of the Lord, it shall lead unto every single other harvest that you have set for them in heaven. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us to sow into the deep. The deep things, God, you know the heart of man. You know what things are going to do. And Father, we just say yes. Can somebody say yes in the comments, God? We just say yes to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. And I sow this prayer with the blood of Jesus. Okay, I will talk to y'all later. But I could have had it all. Oh, rolling in the deep. You had your heart inside, my heart inside of your ass. And you played it to the beat. Okay, I'm done. Bye. All right, all right, all right. You're going to learn today.